The Java 7 Files API, which I've shown in previous chapters, gives you a more streamlined approach to working with files and directories. But in many Java applications, you need a more raw approach, the ability to read and write to files working with one byte at a time. So in this chapter, I'm going to show how to work with streams, one of the lowest level approaches to working with the file system. And I'll start in this video with talking about file streams, both input and output. Java supports input streams and output streams. And there are two primary classes that you should learn how to use first, called file input stream and file output stream. I'm going to use them to read and write two types of files, a text file and an image file. They're primarily designed to work with binary data. But by working with textual data, you can see them at work and prove to yourself that it's working correctly. I'm working in a project called ByteStreams, which has two files. One is called textfile.txt, and the other is flower.jpg, a simple graphic file. Starting in the main class, I'll create a try catch block. I'm going to be creating instances of file input stream and file output stream. These are both classes which, when you use them, need to be opened and closed. But in Java 7, we don't have to explicitly close them. Instead, we just instantiate them inside the try with resources block, and then they'll be closed automatically for us. Within the parentheses, I'll start with a file input stream. I'll make sure to include the import statement for the class, and I'll name this simply in. I'll expand my editor so I can see the code. It's going to get a little wide. And I'll instantiate the file input stream with its constructor method. And I'll pass in the name of the file as a string. You could also pass in a traditional file object. Or if you're using Java 7's Files API, you can get an input stream from a path object. I'll start with the file textfile.txt. I'll make sure to add the semicolon at the end because I'm going to have more than one object I'm creating in the resources section. Now I'll create an instance of file output stream. And I'll call that out. And just like file input stream, I'll instantiate it from the constructor method. And I'll pass in the name of a file. And in this case, I'm going to be writing to a file that doesn't exist yet. In fact, when you're working with file output stream, you don't have to create the file first. You can simply start writing to it. Now I'm ready to read and write the files. I'll place the cursor inside the braces for the try block, and I'll declare an integer variable named C. I'm naming it C for integer. That's because the file input stream is going to be returning one byte at a time, represented as an integer. Now I'll loop. I'll create a while block, and inside a couple of pairs of parentheses, I'll read to the character from the next available byte, using C equals in dot read. Notice that there are a number of versions of the read method. I'm using the simplest one that simply returns the next available byte. If I get back a value of negative 1, that means there are no more bytes available. So I'll use the logic if the return value doesn't equal negative 1. And then I'll add a code block for the while statement. And I'll write to the output stream, passing the one character that I received. Just like the read method, the write method has a number of different signatures you can use. But if all you're trying to do is write a single byte, that's all you need to pass. You don't need to pass an array, and you don't need to pass an offset and a length. So I'll just delete all the other values that pop up there, and I'm saying write that one character to the output file. Now my catch block currently is looking for an exception. That's the high level exception class. But in fact, there are two types of common exceptions you'll find in this kind of operation. File not found exception, that's an exception that could be called when you try to instantiate file input stream, and IO exception, an exception that can happen, say, if you don't have proper permissions for the reading and writing operations. So I'm going to replace this very broad catch block. I'll delete it and save my changes. And that generates a couple of useful errors. The first one says unhandled exception. I'll click the error in the trough on the left. And then say I want to add a catch clause to the surrounding try for this potential error. And I get both catches, one for file not found exception and one for IO exception. I'll get rid of the to do comments. And other than that, I'll leave the default code. 
And now I'm ready to test the code. I'll restore the editor's size. I'll run the application. I'll go to the Package Explorer and refresh. And here is my file, new.txt. And I'll see that the text that was in the original file has been copied over to the new file, one byte at a time. Now, I already mentioned that this approach is typically used for binary files more than for text files. So I'll go back to my main class. And I'll change the name of the file that I'm reading from textfile.txt to flower.jpg. And I'll change the target file, the one being written to with file output stream, to newflower.jpg. I'll save those changes. I'll once again peek at my flower graphic, see what it looks like. I'll come back to the editor and run the application again. I pressed F11, but you could click the Run button or press the right keyboard shortcut for your operating system. Then I'll go back to the Package Explorer and refresh. And here's my new JPG file, and it looks exactly the same as the first one. This was a very high performance, very fast operation. So instead of reading and writing a few dozen characters, we read and wrote a few thousand bytes. The result is the same, though. I'm creating a copy of the original file. The only thing in this code that's unique to Java 7 is the use of the parentheses after the try keyword. If you're working in Android or an earlier version of Java, you'll need to declare the file input stream and file output stream objects above the try and then instantiate them within the try and then perhaps use a finally clause to clean up. In Java 7, it takes less code and is more streamlined. But either way, this is how you use the file input stream and file output stream to read and write both text and binary files.